Hello and welcome to Lotus, where there is plenty of shiny new kit around. They're investing £100 million at Hethel, the majority of it in this new production facility. A production facility which, as you might be able to hear in the background, is so new they are still building it. Now, new production facility needs to be building a new car. Ah, you're thinking the new 2,000 horsepower all-electric Avaya. But no, weird though it sounds, you don't go to this much trouble for just 130 cars. That is being hand assembled in another building over there. It's also, at two million quid, hardly a car for the masses. This, however, just might be. This is the new Emira. It's inspired by the Avaya, but it's not electric at all. No plug-in potential, no hybrid horsepower just pure petrol. And with prices starting at £60,000, you could have 33 of these for the price of one Avaya. But let's drink this in, shall we? See what you get from Lotus for Cayman money. You don't, unfortunately, get the Avaya's big tunnels through the side, and nor do you get active aero, because this is not a pure track attacker. You do, however, get LED lights, a choice of six body colours. You can have your brake calipers painted in four different colours. The wheels, you have a choice of five, so you'll find something to match your shoes, just maybe not these ones. But one of the main reasons they've built this facility is because they need to build the cars better. A leap forward in terms of fit and finish is promised. Better materials, better technology. These cannot come out smelling like glue. And the best place to judge that is in there. Right, let's jump into the Amira. And first things first, how easy was that? No massive high sill, no sort of hunching your knees to your chin as you get in. That's all really good. And when you're in here, this design is really good. It's just clear and clean and there's not too much going on. It feels well organized. Now I should point out, I'm sitting about 20 mil higher than I will be in a production car because these seats aren't finalized yet. Steering wheel driving position on the whole though, feels really encouraging straight away. Lovely Alcantara steering wheel, not too sure about the squared off bits at the top and bottom. But the quality, the fit and finish, feels really good. You've got a sort of Lamborghini style red cover for your start stop button here. It feels nice, the materials, the stitching. It all feels high quality. In terms of gadgets to play with, you've got cruise control and keyless, nothing that's gonna set the world alight in that way. You've got a drive mode selector down here and you've got two digital displays. A 12 inch display here, which you control from the steering wheel and a 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen there. That features Android Auto or Apple CarPlay as standard, while you can also have optionally a 10 speaker KEF system. And I shouldn't think Lotus has ever allowed more speakers into a car before. But more than all of that, you've got quite a lot of storage. There's two cup holders here, more storage under there and a big door pocket. Plus, proper luggage storage back here. You've got 200 litres back here, another 151 in the boot. Big enough, Lotus claims, for a set of golf clubs. If anyone ever uses golf clubs as a measurement these days. Right, that's quite enough about practicality. Let's talk performance. So look, we've come out to the track. All versions of the Amira are obviously mid-engined and rear-wheel drive only. But there's more under here than just a Toyota 3.5 litre V6. That will be the first engine available. It's a 3.5 litre supercharged engine. And all Lotus have said at the moment it's going to have between 360 and 400 horsepower. But that's going to mean it's good for 0 to 60 in 4.5 seconds and about a 180 mile an hour top end. And you'll be able to have that with either a manual or automatic gearbox. But there's another option. You can also have a twin clutch gearbox. And if you have that, the engine doesn't come from Toyota. It doesn't come from anyone else you might expect. No, it comes from AMG. That's right, Lotus has started up a technical partnership with AMG that's gonna see the Amira fitted with the two litre turbocharged engine from the A45. Now they're being a bit coy at the moment. They're not saying whether that's the full house 415 horsepower engine or the lesser 381 horsepower engine. But either way, that's a very high tech piece of kit to put in the back of this new Lotus. The only thing is it's likely to be a bit of a one-off partnership with AMG 
because Lotus has said this will be the last car they fit with an internal combustion engine. It's almost like they've sort of gone to the, to the bosses and gone, please, please, can we have one last great engine in the car? And they have. Suspension, down here. You can choose between tour and sport, and obviously sport is that bit stiffer. All versions though come with hydraulic steering, and we like hydraulic steering. It's unusual these days. Most people have switched to electric racks because they're more efficient. But hydraulic racks have better feel. We can guarantee already pretty much that this car will steer beautifully. It's not long either. It's only just under four and a half meters long. And that means that it's gonna feel nimble and wieldy on track. And it's quite wide as well. And the width means that will help roll control and all the other stuff we like when we're driving it. But it will also mean that at nearly two metres wide, you're going to be at risk on narrow B roads of clattering the cat's eyes and things. This car is as wide as a Bentley Continental GT. What I need here is some sort of size comparison just to show you that. Here's a car you'd never say was too big. It's the original Series 1 Lotus Elise. And look at the size difference between these two. There's 25 years of growth for you, but also a quarter of a century of better safety, technology, luxury and everything else that goes with it. And that explains why this one is nearly twice the weight of that one. But still, in the grand scheme of things, 1,400 kilos, that's pretty competitive. But I wanted the Elise here for another couple of reasons. Firstly, to point out that this is the car that pioneered the bonded aluminium structure that has underpinned every Lotus ever since and still underpins the Amira. But don't go thinking that means the Amira uses an old Evora or Exige platform. Same technology, but all new underneath and built in a brand new facility. Secondly, the Elise has almost single-handedly supported the brand for the last 25 years. If it hadn't come along, I don't know where Lotus would be now, or even if it would still be around. Lotus needs the Amira to reignite the brand in the same way that cars like this did, to remind people of what's gone before as much as what's coming up. Now, the Amira's design is forward-looking, but its technical package unashamedly retro. Lotus themselves describe it as a brand new, old-fashioned sports car. And you know what? That's fine. Tempted? The first cars land next spring and they land everywhere. It's a global car, giving it the best chance to tackle the Toyota Supra, BMW M2 and Porsche Cayman. Lotus want to sell 5,000 a year. Now that's chicken feed by Porsche standards, but numbers that will make a real difference here and help to keep that new production line humming. <laughs>